Hello learners, welcome to the Christ College Autonomous Open Courseware course on Translation Studies. As you know, the course is designed to understand the process of translation from an academic and theoretical level wherein we dwell into the history of translation, various theoretical positions regarding the process and the nuances of doing translation in different genres of literature. This module particularly deals with the processes of poetry translation and intends to understand different methods that a motivated translator could use while dealing with poetry. The module also highlights the difficulties that the process of translation in general faces which the translators must be wary of. Now, before we begin with poetry translation, Let's first talk about poetry in general. According to Oxford English Dictionary, poetry is the art or work of a poet. We all might remember the famous definition of the romantic poet William Wordsworth about poetry. That is, poetry is the spontaneous overflow of powerful emotions recollected in tranquility. John Ruskin, the Victorian writer and philosopher, in his lectures on art published in 1870 asks what is poetry and answers the suggestion by the imagination of noble grounds for the noble emotions. Now according to T.S. Eliot the modern day poet, poetry is not turning loose of emotion but an escape from emotion. It is not the expression of personality but an escape from personality. P.B. Shelley on the other hand describes poetry as the eternal truth. A poem is a very image of life expressed in its eternal truth, he says. And at last, according to Robert Frost, the figure of a poem makes, it begins in delight and ends in wisdom. These multifaceted definitions of poetry are mentioned here to make us know the extent of understanding that must be known to any translator so as to acknowledge the real virtue of the work she or he deals with. Translation is often referred to be as an art. So the task of a translator is to make an art from art keeping the aesthetic value of the work. Now, when it comes to poetry translation, one must always remember the famous maxim by Robert Frost about translation in general and poetic translation in particular, where he defines poetry as what gets lost in translation. Now, this is a, a, a comment that you, you might find difficult to process because you are having Robert Frost himself defining poetry on one side and then coming up and saying that poetry is something that gets lost in translation. He meant of course that it is impossible to carry over from one language into another the special qualities of a poem like its sound and rhythm, its meter, syntax and different connotations. Some critics have felt that in translating poems, the translators betray them, inevitably turning the translation into something which at best may approximate but which invariably distorts the original. This point of view, however, has not prevented translators from continuing their difficult but important work. Translation of poetry is one of the most difficult and challenging tasks for every translator. Returning to Robert Frost's definition according to which poetry is what gets lost in translation, we can say that this statement could be considered as a truthful one to a certain extent because there is no one-to-one -one equivalent when comparing two languages. Even if the translator possesses a profound knowledge in the uh, source language, they would not be able to create a replica of the original text. Now, having given you a brief idea about the general issues and difficulties with regard to poetry translation, I would like to end this introductory session by giving you some general tips of translating poetry. We shall focus on the various strategies and theoretical formulations of poetry translations in the later sessions. 
Now remember, these are not hardcore rules or theories of translation, but tips just to enhance your interest in translation. Now let's imagine that you have decided to translate a poem. Maybe you have been studying a foreign language your whole life and want to put your talents to good use. Maybe you just came across a wonderful foreign poet and fell in love with her or his beautiful lines and you decide to recreate it in your native tongue so that others can also acknowledge the beauty of the poem. Either way, translating poetry is a serious business and should not be taken lightly. Your job as a translator is not only to pass the meaning of the poem into another language but to respect and honor its spirit. So the following tips may guide you in that. So the first tip that I would like to share with you is stay close to the poem. Read the poem again and again until the words become the second nature on your tongue. By doing this, you'll be able to feel the rhythm of the poem. You'll be able to recognize the pace, the pauses, the beats and the swirls of energy that is there in the poem. Second and important factor is to know your poet. Now, if you're lucky enough to pick a living poet to translate, you must make sure that you write to him or her. Get to know the person. Ask him or her the questions about the poem. What was the poet thinking when writing a particular poem? What does the poet think about the meaning of the poem? Is there any imagery or language that has been repeated in the poem? Is there anything symbolic from his or her life that he or she has imbibed into the poem? What does the poet in general think about poetry? Now, the more you know about the poet, about his or her life, the better are you able to understand the nuances of the poem. The poet is answering your questions to help you with your translation. Now, if however you choose a poet who has passed on, your job is a little harder. Try and find out as much about the poet's life, his other works uh, or the things that he or she has done in his life as much as you can. Now, most countries have National Writers Association who keep uh, uh, websites about different poets, uh, about their works, about the general uh, uh, life, about the poet. All those things can be a point where you can look and search to know more about the poet. Now, if they don't, check the website and university libraries and language departments. You are sure to find some data about the poet and their work. Now, maybe from there you can find out other people who might have worked on the poet, who might have been knowing the poet for a long time and they can actually help and guide you. Now, build as many contacts as you can and be familiar with the poet and you will get the sense of the poem. Next is to go for the grace. Now, when you translate a poem, your job is to stay as close to the meaning as possible. That said, you also have the artistic license to use the meaning to make a clear and graceful translation. Translating slang or informal phrases is an example uh, of when to use artistic license. Now, some slangs have absolutely no meaning in another language. They are highly language specific. So a particular slang that are that is being used in the source language, you may not not be able to find an equivalent in the target language when you are trying to do the translation. In that case, turn the meaning of the slang into its closest equivalent that you can find in the target language. Remember, you want the readers in your language to enjoy the poem, not to marvel at how well you can directly translate the words. Next is to be wary of the process. Now, this tip is for those of you who think translating takes just few minutes tops. Now, there are some great computer programs that are designed for translation. There are also some excellent dictionaries and phrase books that might be available for you. I would suggest do not rely on them to give you end all and be all translation. You must do the footwork to understand the poem rather than going for a mere verbal word to word translation of a work. You can use these computer programs and dictionary translations 
as a guide but not as the end of the process of translation and the last tip that i want to share is to be patient with your work now when you finish a uh, translation sit tight for a few days maybe even a week before you go over it take some time to think about something else maybe in your own language then come back and see where the gaps and goodies are there in your work remember translation tests not just your linguistic skills but your patience too and as a translator you must be ready to give in to the whole process so dear learners so in this particular session we were trying to understand the basics of translating poetry and the general difficulties that you as a translator might face in the coming sessions we will be dealing more into the theoretical uh, formulations that might help you uh, in the translating process so uh, make sure that you go through all the sessions to get a wholesome understanding of the translation process especially with regard to poetry so we will meet in the next session till then bye bye Happy learning. Thank you.